We all like to believe that we're good at something maybe even better than most. And in some areas, maybe we are. But here's an uncomfortable truth. You're probably wrong about how good or bad you actually are. In many areas of your life, it's quite possible that you're either overestimating or underestimating yourself. And most unsettling of all, the areas where you're most mistaken are often the very ones in which you're most certain. The name for this has the weight of scientific research, but the essence is simple and devastating. The Dunning-Kruger effect, a psychological phenomenon showing how the least competent people are often the most confident, precisely because they lack the tools to realize how little they know. That's what we'll talk about today, an invisible enemy hiding inside us, about how ignorance, when left unrecognized, turns into arrogance, and how true wisdom, contrary to appearances, dresses itself in silence, doubt, and humility. There's a kind of villain that doesn't arrive with shouts or weapons. He doesn't break into your home, doesn't steal your money. He settles quietly inside your mind, and most dangerously, he makes you believe you're the hero of the story. This villain is ignorance, but not just any ignorance. Not the kind that says, I don't know. It's the one that shouts, I'm sure. It's ignorance disguised as knowledge, that confuses confidence with competence, that sees doubt as weakness. The Dunning-Kruger effect is the perfect trap. The less you know, the more you believe you know. Because to recognize your own incompetence, you would need a skill you don't yet have. It's like trying to see the world with a blindfold and insisting it's dark just because you can't see. Imagine a man robbing two banks in broad daylight with no mask, no cap, no disguise. He looks into the security cameras and smiles. He's convinced he won't be recognized. When the police arrest him hours later, he doesn't react with violence. He reacts with surprise. But I used lemon juice, he says, genuinely confused. His name was MacArthur Wheeler, and he truly believed, with complete certainty, that rubbing lemon juice on his face would make him invisible to security cameras, because lemon juice can be used as invisible ink on old letters. He concluded his logic would also work for electronic surveillance. At the time, Wheeler was shocked by his arrest and insisted his lemon juice strategy had worked. He even tested it with a camera before the crime. But police think he may have misinterpreted the results. According to police, Wheeler's test could have failed because of a faulty film, misuse of the camera, or even a change in the machine's position during the shot. This true story came to the attention of David Dunning, professor of social psychology at Cornell University. He became obsessed with a single question. How can someone be so wrong and yet so sure they're right? Dunning joined with his student, Justin Kruger. Together, they designed a series of experiments to test a bold hypothesis that severe incompetence not only prevents us from getting things right, it also blinds us to our own errors. And what they found was as shocking as Wheeler rubbing lemon on his face. The less a person knows, the more they believe they know. And the more they know, the more they realize how much they don't. They recruited participants and gave them tests on humor, logic, and grammar. After each test, volunteers were asked to rate their own performance and estimate how they compared to others. The results were alarming. The worst performances came with the highest self-confidence. Not only did they get more answers wrong, they believed they had done very well. The best performers, on the other hand, underestimated their answers. They thought everyone else had done just as well as they had. In other words, the more they knew, the more humble they became. And the less they knew, the more certain they were of their truths. It confirmed something Bertrand Russell had said decades earlier. The problem with the world is that the stupid are cocksure, while the intelligent are full of doubt. Bold ignorance is the invisible villain of our era. And perhaps the most tragic thing is this. The stronger it becomes, 
the more it silences the voice of doubt, the very thing that could save us. The case of MacArthur Wheeler was not just a poorly planned crime, it was a symbol of a universal human phenomenon, because in a way, we've all put lemon juice on our faces at some point in life, thinking we knew more than we did. Picture this graph. On the horizontal axis, how much you actually know about a subject. On the vertical axis, how much you think you know. Now, imagine what happens at the start of the curve. You've barely started learning, but your confidence skyrockets. This peak is known as Mount Stupid, the point where ignorance is so deep that it's confused for enlightenment. That's where the WhatsApp experts are born, the self-declared barbecue geniuses. People who read a headline and become epidemiologists, watch one documentary and become economists. Confidence rises faster than knowledge, and the result is an inflated ego floating above empty ground. But then something happens. You keep studying, go beyond the surface, and start to realize the subject is much more complex than it seemed. That's when you tumble off the peak and fall into the valley of despair, the moment when you begin to see the true scale of what you don't know. It's painful, even humiliating, but it's also the beginning of wisdom. From that valley begins a new ascent, the slope of enlightenment, a slower, more authentic journey. Your confidence returns, but now it's based on real knowledge. You start to master the subject, but never again with the arrogance you had at first, because now you know what you don't know, and that changes everything. The Dunning-Kruger effect's graph isn't just an educational image, it's a mirror. It shows that the problem isn't being on the peak or in the valley, it's thinking you've reached the top when you're still at the base of the mountain. Worse, the higher you shout from up there, the less you hear those trying to warn you from below. Now let's explore where this effect hides in daily life, in the loudest and emptiest voices we hear all the time. Have you noticed how in many meetings, debates, or even family dinners, the loudest voice isn't always the one with the most to say? The room is filled with opinions, certainties, and diagnoses. And almost always, the person who raises their voice with conviction is the one who studied the least, reflected the least, doubted the least. That's not a coincidence. It's the Dunning-Kruger effect in action. The person who knows little can't perceive just how little they know. They lack precisely the skill to recognize their own ignorance. And because they don't see their own mistakes, they believe they're right, that they're the one who understands, that others just don't get it. Meanwhile, the better prepared hesitate, weighing each word, knowing the world is far too complex for easy answers, so they fall silent. In practice, this means that often we are led by the most confident, not the most competent. We follow the advice of whoever shouts the loudest, not the one who thinks the best. And so, bold ignorance dominates spaces that should be filled with quiet wisdom. On the internet, this phenomenon is amplified. The logic of social networks favors those with certainty, not those with questions. The algorithm boosts the extreme, the absolute, the simplified, not careful study, doubt, or nuance. The result? Millions of voices, but few ideas. Lots of noise, little listening, and a dangerous illusion that knowing is just about seeming to know. But why do true experts doubt themselves so much? Because those best prepared are exactly the ones who hesitate most. It's time to reveal the other face of the Dunning-Kruger effect the quietest, the loneliest, and the truest. While the ignorant cling to certainty as if holding on to a life raft at sea, true experts live surrounded by questions. For them, doubt isn't a weakness, it's a guiding light. But there's a price to seeing with such clarity. You start to see the size of the ocean, and the more you know, the more you realize how much more there is to learn. It's like turning on a flashlight in the dark and realizing the darkness stretches far beyond what you imagined. 
That's why the wise doubt themselves, because they've explored enough to know the world doesn't fit into ready-made formulas, that every certainty comes with a string of maybes. This phenomenon has a name, epistemic modesty, the humility to recognize the limits of your own knowledge. But in today's world, this virtue is seen as hesitation, and to hesitate, for many, is to lose ground. Meanwhile, those at the summit of ignorance, up on Mount Stupid, keep giving lectures, shaping opinions, without even knowing that they don't know. That's why so many brilliant professionals stay quiet. They think their competence is common, that what they know is something everyone knows. This is what studies call false consensus. The best underestimate their own value because they think everyone else is at the same level. This silence is dangerous because it creates space for the noise of superficiality, for the arrogance of those who never looked deeply. This brings us to a paradox. We've never had so much access to information and never been so vulnerable to misinformation because an excess of unstructured, shallow data creates only the illusion of knowing. It's the era of, I read one article and became an expert, of, I watched a video and now I teach, of, I don't trust science, I trust my gut. But there is a possible path between the arrogance of ignorance and the silence of wisdom. And it begins within us. There is a rare and transformative moment in a person's life, the moment you realize you don't know as much as you thought. It's not easy to reach. It takes courage to look in the mirror and see the cracks in your own knowledge. That moment is the beginning of metacognition, the ability to think about your own thinking, to observe your certainties with suspicion, to ask, am I seeing everything or just what I want to see? Metacognition is the natural antidote to the Dunning-Kruger effect. It doesn't stop us from making mistakes but it gives us the chance to notice those mistakes, to correct course, to learn. So how do you cultivate it? First, with active humility. Just knowing we are flawed isn't enough. You have to want to learn, seek feedback, listen more than you speak. Second, with real curiosity, not the kind that just seeks to confirm what we already believe, but the kind that delights in the unknown that asks questions not to win a debate, but to better understand. Third, with exposure to difference. Surrounding yourself only with voices that think like you is comfortable and dangerous. Respectful confrontation with other views is what expands consciousness. And finally, with time for silence. The world screams for quick answers, but wisdom requires pause. It needs space where doubt can breathe. The good news? Science shows that when an incompetent person truly starts to learn, they don't just improve their performance, they also start to recognize their flaws. They stop being victims of the Dunning-Kruger effect, not because they know everything, but because they finally understand that knowing is a journey, not a destination. And that's where true intelligence begins the kind that doesn't need a stage or applause, the kind that can calmly say, I don't know, but I want to learn. <laughs>